What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 12 of the STI build. I'm ready to push forward, get that intake manifold installed. But first, uh, there's a couple other things that need to be done to the, to the top of the block before the intake manifold can go on, including this coolant crossover pipe and uh, this pipe assembly. Also, I've kind of just remembered we are putting in an aftermarket oil pressure sensor and the best option, the easiest thing for me to do here is to actually pull the other oil oil bung out of the old block and actually put it into the back of this block here so that we can mount the second sensor right in there and just hard mount it, uh, reduce the chance of leaks and uh, it'll kind of have its own little spot and then when I go to reuse that block I can just pull one off of my old block or one that I have outside or something um, then I'm gonna pretty much move on to the exhaust get all the exhaust on and we're gonna be ready to break out the turbo so first I'm gonna set up the camera I actually have a new tripod to use get some really nice height and I can look down on stuff now without having to get it set up awkwardly on strange things it comes up to about shoulder height which is really nice so I'll start on this stuff first, intake onto the exhaust, turbo last. So I've gotten the oil pressure fitting from the old engine and needs to go back into in this spot right here. So it's an eight millimeter hex, hex bit. And we just wanna thread this one out and thread the other one in. So yeah, a whole bunch of the old sealant had actually broken off and gone down into the hole. And, uh, but I was able to vacuum it all out. Nice and clear now. So I can go ahead and put in the old, this other fitting. It does come with a washer, uh, so if you're getting one from the dealer, make sure you get a washer. And it, this one does have quite a bit of sealant on it. The threads in here still have a little bit of sealant. Tightening this in is going to be uh, a good seal. And now with this fitting installed, we can go ahead and put in this aftermarket oil pressure sender. Um, it's for the ProSport gauge. And it does have some sealant already on the thread, so we're pretty much ready to install it. Okay, so I've been trying and trying and trying to thread this ProSport sending unit into the factory Subaru Bung, and it's just not gonna happen. Uh, so it's obviously a different size. The thread looks identical, and I know the fitting's good. I can, I can thread my analog mechanical gauge into there, and it threads in absolutely fine. So I'm thinking one's like regular or British pipe pipe thread and the other is like national pipe thread or it's something like that because even the threads look identical I just it just does not want to start and I even took off some of the the Loctite to, you know thinking it might be preventing it from going in but so there's obviously a different adapter to put into the block or some kind of thread to thread adapter but uh, I've got uh, I let Tyler know and he's looking into it now to see see what he can find so I got two new O-rings in the top of the block here for the crossover pipe and I'm ready to go ahead and put in the crossover pipe. It'll basically sit in here like this but at the same time this guy has to go in because two of the bolts holding the crossover pipe down actually retain this in place as well so it all goes together at the same time. You actually got to start this pipe down into the hose here because this one forward pipe is for water and the rear pipe is for air and emissions. And the same with this one hose here at the back. It's actually a crank vent so it needs to be pushed down on here. Um, but I ended up taking off that, ho that clamp that was on there so we actually have to install a new clamp. The bolts retaining the crossover pipe are set to 4.7 foot pounds or 56.4 inch pounds. I 
I have some clamps that I have to replace because of ones that I kind of broke to get off out of the way. Uh, both vent lines that join the uh, valve covers to the crankcase. And this little water line right here also needs a clamp. So I'll just whip those together on there really quick. So I've talked to Tyler and he, he, he showed me a picture of an adapter plug from ProSport and it measure, they show the measurement the same as the ProSport sensor. So I'm guessing that they are different threads for the plugs. So he, I, I told him he's going to have to go ahead and order that ProSport adapter. Um, getting it in afterwards is definitely not going to be easy. Uh, I think if I can get some of this stuff pulled apart, uh, the throttle body will most likely have to be off. It's going to be tight to get in there. So before I go any further on the top, I'm going to actually spin the block around for the last time and install the exhaust manifold. Got some new manifold gaskets to install. You get them right from Subaru. They are a multi-layered steel gasket. Very high quality stuff. Now I've got the exhaust header ready to install. Uh, sometimes these just fall right on, but other times they need a little stretch to get started in place. Now I just need to put the nuts in place and tighten everything up. You can see this uh, this one inside bolt on this side is probably going to need a swivel to actually even torque it down. The torque spec for the manifold nuts or header nuts is 29 and a half foot pounds so I've got my torque wrench set to 30 foot pounds and I'm starting from the center so I've got the manifold fully installed fully tightened down torqued I'm not going to put on the oil filter yet because I, I want to fill it with oil uh, so I'll probably end up leaving it for last like while the engines actually sitting in the car but now I'm ready to spin around again and start concentrating on the intake manifold and the up pipe Two more things that I'm going to mount before the intake manifold. I'm going to put the power steering on with its bracket and the uh, AC alternator support bracket. Uh, so I already have one of the bolts here. I've got another one, maybe two to put in from the other block. I've got the three bolts for the power steering pump, so I'll start with that. The power steering pump bracket bolts are 16.2 foot-pounds or 194.4 inch-pounds. So I've got my inch-pound torque wrench set to 195. I'm going to start with this bolt down here, the long bolt. I just like to double check the, the torque. So I got the AC alternator mounting bracket. And 26.6 foot pounds for these bolts.
Okay, so now I'm ready to sit the intake manifold on. But first we got all these gaskets and the phenolic spacers. So we need uh, one gasket over here. And then one spacer over here. And then one gasket over here. The same over here on the other side. Sandwiching the the spacer with two gaskets. And now we're ready for the intake manifold. The uh, the turbo side of the intake is a little bit difficult because you have this this one water hose. You literally have to try and grab hold of, and I usually do it with a set of these, to kind of pull up on it past the turbo inlet. It almost seems as soon as you get that massaged through there, it, the intake almost just drops into place. It's definitely got a little ways to go. Figured I would give you a nice close in shot of the actual back of this head when it's on the engine so you can get a really good look because usually the turbo and the up pipe and everything's in the way here so here's the here's the port we're gonna put the delete on and the oil feed that we're gonna unbolt and take this retaining bolt for the line all out this coolant line stays and the oil return is down over here This line's really close to the bolt. You do get new bolts with the uh, with the air injection delete covers. So I think we're gonna have to put that on first. So my camera light just bailed, and uh, have to resort resort to some other light. But here's the Torque Solutions cover. Uh, so this is gonna basically go right in here with the same gasket. They provide you some new bolts. Yeah, so if we tighten down this first, and then tighten up this this line, uh, should have plenty of clearance, and the line will be in the in the proper location to get onto the turbo. So what I can see from the manual, these are 6.6 .6 foot pounds, uh, 79.4 inch pounds, but I've got my torque wrench set to 80. Now we can install this side. So the bolts on this side are a little bigger. They take a little higher torque. Uh, 14 foot-pounds or 168 inch-pounds. And I'm going to 170. Let me see you put them up. Reach the skies and the stars up above cause it's one time for the underdog, one time for the underdog, you got the world on your team, even if that ain't what it seems, it's one time for the underdog, it's one time for the underdog. A young nigga with a dollar and a dream, and these Nikes on my feet, trying to stay about the streets, so I'm rhyming, pulling 187s all on these beats, instead of on the concrete, submitting my future while they were focused on what they cheap as shit, I'm like a chief, hey honcho, tell me that it's impossible, I give to you pronto, be working all these late nights and these early mornings like Alonzo, so one day they'll be calling me great, just call me Gonzo, but 
I'm never acting nor is anybody pulling strings. Everything I have came from sacrificing everything. I traded working nine to five for the minimum for working nine stops. So my life be like a cinema screen. But in the end, I wouldn't have it any other way. Got on my knees and for this rap to work is what I prayed. And that was happening, crunching numbers like Captain a serial killer, compelling listeners with his passion for words. Never acting my verbs, but truly fashion to serve. Not only masses, but curves, not just the hood, but the birds. Know you hear it every time I grace the mic. Then I give it to God, feeling blinded by the lights in his song. Let me see you put them up. Reach the skies, let the stars up above. Cause it's one time for the underdog. One time for the underdog. You got the world on your team. Even if that ain't what it seems. It's one time for the underdog. One time for the So my microphone ended up not recording. And I'm not sure what I exactly lost, so I'm just going to do this whole part back over again. Um, I don't know if I mentioned or if the audio caught it in the last couple or not, but I sprayed these brackets. I sprayed this one while it was on the motor. I just kind of put a little, a little bit of cardboard in behind there and sprayed it while it was on there. Just a little bit of rust buildup that I took off. And the same with this bracket here. So the now the up pipe's fully fastened and. I'm ready to actually mock, mock fit the turbo in here. Uh, I decided to take the factory line and reuse it. I found that this braided line didn't seem like it was going to be long enough to get up to the turbo, so I've used the factory line. I actually turned it around so that the mounting bracket wouldn't interfere. I gave it a little bend out and then I put on the adapter fitting and the braided line and it's going to fit absolutely perfect like that I think. So I'm going to grab the turbo and see how well I can get it to fit in here. So this is the Blausch Dominator that we're going to be using and uh, it's pretty much just a straight bolt on. I've already put this return hose back on. I did have it on the pipe but I figured it would be easier to actually fish it down through there with it already on the turbo. Um, so that's kind of where you start as you get it started down in through here you kind of just reach down in below and start that that oil drain down onto the oil drain tube okay so I've got the drain started on there pretty good now I'll take my hook tool and just come to the turbo inlet and start trying to draw it around the, the actual turbo housing. And the turbo will actually start to fall right into place. You might have to put a little bit of pressure on it. And it looks really close right there. So you can see I, I'm going to have enough room, I could still put in the studs. The inlet is all the way on. I could actually, I might even be able to draw it back out a little bit. And the drain is pretty much all the way on there. Uh, gets a little tight in here. But that guy we don't really have to worry about. So I think like that, that's kind of how it's going to end up sitting. And just to give a really good look. So now, so for the wastegate, it's a Turbo Smart 40 mil, and usually the orientation on these, got our new clamp. be over here something like this and you want these ports facing upward and the exit for the wastegate should be pointed in that direction and I'll just temporarily spin a bolt in so the downpipe will come up and bolt up here and the uh, wastegate tube or the dump tube will be pointed in the downward direction we are going to make a modification of this and take it right down to the side of the car but uh, that might not happen until the car is actually running so but now I can see everything's gonna fit really nice and uh, it's pretty much ready to bolt together now 
So I'd really like to go ahead and bolt everything down, but I, I, I do need some room to do some other work. So that, that oil pressure fitting that I need to change so that I can get the aftermarket gauge in there. And I still need to get those, those little bit longer intake bolts in. Um, but once I have that stuff, I can literally bolt the turbo on, get the wastegate fitted and uh, plug the entire harness in and get ready to take it off the stand. So the next episode I'll clean up all that stuff, take it off the stand, probably go ahead and finish up the back, put on the clutch and it'll be good to go. This is a this is a fairly large job and there's a lot of extras to it so it's been time consuming and I've got my own projects that I'm constantly thinking about and it's just, just kind of overloaded what I'm what I'm capable of remembering to order and do and so I've just kind of had to put my other stuff that's in my mind on the side even though I have all the parts to do the Impreza now um, I'm just I, I have to concentrate on this thing and get it finished so that I can bring the other car in so yeah busy busy if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button leave your questions and comments further down below and I'll see you in the next one